First Timothy, uh, <clears throat> First Timothy, chapter four, verses one through five, and we're again we're going to be strictly uh, preaching on the great falling away, falling away, meaning over the years you have seen many people in your church, many people in your family, friends, extended friends, extended family, on the news, many people leaving the leaving the faith, or just completely walking away from God, completely walking away from Christ. Uh, this is what scripture had already told us prior to our existence. This is a part of the great falling away. And um, we have to make sure we are in tune uh, with the word of God so we can better prepare ourselves in these final times. During the falling away time, people are leaving again, leaving God, leaving the faith, um, walking away from church, period, not trying to have any any tag or any hold on what the truth in God's word is, not alone, um, not alone. Um, how the lifestyle God intends us to live. Praise the Lord to everybody watching us on Instagram. Uh, just to recap, recap for you guys on Instagram, we are going over First Timothy chapter four verses one through five. This is the entitlement of the great falling away to expound uh, on the scriptures. How God already told us that many will fall away from the scriptures and fall away from Christ. So we most definitely uh, want you guys to be of knowledge of this. And as I share my screen uh, with you guys on Facebook as well, uh, I'm going to read it here for those watching it on Instagram. To open up, let's pray. Father God, in the mighty name of Christ Jesus, please give us understanding and great wisdom that is given only by you. Please let our ears be undeaf, let our hearts be unhardened, in Jesus' name. So with that, family, again, grab your Bibles. If you have your Bible app or your physical Bibles, you want to make sure anyone you are listening to or, or seeing that's preaching the Word of God, you want to make sure you can go directly to Scripture and read it for yourself. Don't let anyone come teach you something or say Something that God said and they can't show you in the Bible. Amen. So in first Timothy uh, chapter four, verse one through five family, the written word of God says for those on Facebook, you should see my screen uh, as well. Instagram, I'm going to be reading it. It says now the spirit speaketh expressly. The speaketh. Now the Spirit speaketh expressively that in the latter times, talking about the end days or the last times, uh, some shall depart from the faith. Again, in the opening, you heard me say you have witnessed, whether you have witnessed your friend, your family members uh, on the news, extended friends, extended family members. You have witnessed someone walk away from the faith, whether they claiming they've been woke whether they claiming they have found God in another faction and another package or whether they have found religion, whether they found God in another tradition. You have you know someone people, my brothers and sisters, you know someone who said I have found God this way rather than the old way and then in the old teachings that we were given by our forefathers or by our grandmothers or mothers. Amen. Now, as first Timothy opens up again, it says now the spirit speaketh expressly talking about the spirit of God is speaking expressly that in the latter times talking about in these times right now, some not all, but some shall depart from the faith. Some shall fall out of the faith. Some shall leave the faith. Some shall leave Jesus. Some shall walk away. Some shall give up. Some shall depart. Same thing. Okay? Some shall depart from the faith, 
giving heed to seducing spirits. When it says giving heed to seducing spirits or deceitful spirits, meaning it can be another so-called minister, another so-called pastor, another so-called bishop, another so-called uh, tradition, another so-called woke teaching, another so-called uh, whatever the world is trying to put out there uh, to us right now. It will, it's a deceitful, seducing spirit. It's not of God. I know it's it's it sound good. It's a sound good doctrine, but it's not it's not ground godly doctrine from the most high God. It sound good. It's a good sound good doctrine that you're hearing from these seducing spirits and these uh uh deceitful spirits. It sound good, but it's not sound doctrine. It's not accurate. It's false. These these so-called preachers, these so-called ministers, these so-called uh, other faiths, these so-called other faiths and other religions um, are giving you deceitful, seducing doctrine. And it says doctrines of devils, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Anything opposite of the truth. Is bad. Anything opposite of good is evil. Period. There's no in between. There's no well. They they positive over there. They they loving mankind. They they preach loving each other. They all coming together and they doing stuff for the community. They just don't worship Jesus. They just don't believe in Jesus. What the words say, family? Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines, meaning other teachings of devils. Therefore, it's a teaching of the devil. No matter how clean cut it look, no matter how orchestrated or organized it may be, it is a doctrine of the devil if it doesn't preach that Jesus Christ is your savior. There's no time for sugar coating. There's no time for, oh, I'm not trying to make him or her or they mad people gonna be mad regardless they was mad at jesus and he was an innocent man they killed the innocent man so what do you think they gonna do to you just because you preaching this truth there's no in between there is no in between when it comes to opposite of sound godly doctrine Anything opposite of Jesus is the Savior is a doctrine of the devil. Period. Anything opposite of preaching Jesus Christ is the Savior, is the Redeemer, is a doctrine of the devil. Period. There's no, ain't no time to be sugarcoating it. Ain't no time to be caring about other people's, other entities, other organizations' feelings. You're living in a time right now where God has given us a little bit of grace to still get ourselves right and to get grounded in him spiritually the right way. You're living in a time of pandemics, chaos, wars, uh, sickness and disease, elections, and many other different things all at one time. All these things are happening at one time time and you can also attest family that you're living in a time right now if you are not grounded if god hasn't put you in position in these times you're living in right now you're either gonna sink or swim there is no middle class there is no oh i can get by no you either have it or you don't God is going to make sure he takes care of his people and provides their basic needs. He's going to make sure they have clothing. He's going to make sure they have shelter. He's going to make sure they have food. It might not be what you want, but he's going to make sure if you trust in him and you believe in him and you have a strong relationship in him spiritually, he's going to make sure you have those three basic needs. Shelter, food, and clothing. 
to continue with the scriptures, family, in verse two, speaking lies and hypocrisy. Come on now. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Just today in the news, uh, the Pope, and side note, there's only one father and he's in heaven, okay? Can no man, and, in, and this is scripture backing this up, can no man on earth call himself father? There's only one father and he's in heaven. Like I said, it ain't no sugar coating. We ain't going to be patty caking this no more. You need to get it how it is scripturally so you can be saved and your household can be saved. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. The Pope today says those that are in or same sex uh, marriage or same sex uh, relationship should have a law to take care of them and should be welcome. And it shouldn't be uh, an issue with that. There's no issue with loving an individual who has a mindset to live a certain way. Let me break that down. I love my fellow brothers and sisters who may still be on drugs. I love my fellow brothers and sisters who still may be alcoholics. I love my fellow brothers and sisters who may be in a lifestyle of homosexuality or lesbianism or this and that. I love them, okay? But when it comes to rules and regulations of this word, I cannot take from it, and I sure cannot add to it. It tells us that towards the end of Revelation. If any man takes from this word or adds to it, he will suffer. He will suffer. What, what does it say? He will suffer all the... The, the ill wills that was spoken in this Bible. All the, the diseases and different things. The wrath, basically. He will suffer. He or she, if you feel that you can take or add to it. Now, for a, a person in that position to say that. And to say, well, we need to graph it in a law and make it okay. You're trying to change the word of God. I preached this a while ago. We can't change the mission statement where we work. We can't change the ethics manual where we work. We can't change the policy or what time we supposed to show up from work. If I could, I walk in tomorrow and say, I don't feel like wearing this no more. I don't think I should. I think I should be able to wear this attire every day. And show up at 9.30 every day or 10.30 on Tuesdays just because I feel I have the obligation to. Again, I love you for having that mindset. I still love you as a person. But I cannot change my policy just because you feel you should live in that mindset. Come on. Come on. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. That's in verse 2. Having their conscience seared, meaning quickly. When you seared something, you're quickly, you know, frying. You're quick, quickly uh, searing your, your, your food. And it's a quick fry moment. You're having their conscience seared, meaning their conscience is quickly being grafted into this foolishness. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Verse 3, family. Forbidding to marry. We live in, we've been living in an age for the last couple of years where they say, don't nobody get married no more. Why do you want to get married? The opposite of what God has already laid out. And what did we say earlier, a few minutes ago? Anything saying the opposite of God is what? A doctrine of the devil. Come on. No sugar, no sugar coating, no in between here. Anything opposite of what's written is a doctrine of the devil. Again, in verse three, it says forbidding to marry. The world and the government itself is teaching you, well, you don't have to get married. Just live together for the rest of your life. Don't get married. Who wants to get married? It's, it's too many crazy folks out here. 
Now, I, I, I will say this. When you're brought up and you're, you're equipped with the right tools uh, before you get married, like I told my wife not too long ago, have a list. I know now to teach my son to have a list. You want to have a list to teach them to ask the other person, uh, do you suffer for them from this? Is your mama at the house? Is your daddy at the house? Uh, and have the woman, women, you ask these same questions too to the male. Do you have a, a male in your life? Do you have a father? Do you have a mother? Uh, do they all live in the same house? Uh, is anyone on drugs? Has anyone suffered from this? Has anyone suffered from that? You want to ask these questions before you commit to a person. That way you can know what type of spiritual battles you're going to be dealing with. Now that's what you need to do. But don't say and believe what the world is saying about not getting married. That's a whole nother teaching, y'all. A whole nother teaching. But forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats. Are y'all reading that? Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats. As many people walking around here. This is a whole in death teaching by itself. As many people walking around here believing. I mean, they have it in their lifestyle. They wake up believing this just because what the world has showed them in so-called scientific facts that you don't need meat, period. And in the word, are you reading this in first Timothy chapter four? But the word said in these times, they will be commanding many people to abstain from meats, meaning they will be commanding you like they've been doing for years to walk away from eating meat. How many people you know right now just eat grass all day? How many human beings you know right now don't, don't eat any type of meat? We're going we gonna to focus on that a little bit because you know a whole lot of people. And the rest of the scripture says, if you're reading along, it says commanding to abstain from meats. Now, hold up, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So if you know the word of God, you know the truth, you know, if you have your chicken or if you have your steak, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them. Which believe and know the truth. And verse 4 it says for every creature. It says for every creature of God is good. It's in 1 Timothy. You got to catch up. You got to catch up. Because most people will say. Well, well why was it in Leviticus. And when uh, God took them out of Egypt. He was telling them don't eat this and that. He said, God was telling him, don't eat this and that. Did you, did you read prior to why God was telling them, don't eat this and that? Do you know the things that they was doing in Egypt? Don't you know in Egypt they was worshiping the creature rather than the creator? That's scripture. In Egypt, they decided to worship the creature rather than the creator. And was doing all kinds of horrendous things with animals. And playing with DNA. Therefore making them unclean. But the same craziness is going on today. You got crazy. He or she walking around jumping in the cows. Jumping in the horses. Doing all kinds of crazy stuff with dogs and cats. These the type of things sick human beings have been doing for a long time. Even during Egypt. That's why God had to put laws in, in order. There were so many uh, precepts and different laws and different things. The 300, 400 and something. Because of the crazy and the foolishness that was in the land. That mankind was doing with animals. 
But you see, when you take something that God created that was good and you do something evil with it, that equals uncleanliness. This isn't rocket scientists, but we let the world teach us that, oh, well, you're not supposed to eat this. You're not supposed to eat meat at all. Don't eat no cow. God is not finna send you to hell just because you had some chicken. God is not finna allow your body to be unhealthy because you ate some bacon. He's not. You, you have to read the scripture in its entirety. You got to know why God put all those laws and regulations and precepts and this and that during Moses' time. Because them people was acting out of control. Again, God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good. This word says right here in verse 4 again. For every creature of God is good. If it's of God, if it was made by God, is good. Now we ain't talking about no uh, cloning animals. Because you know man has been cloning stuff. Shooting stuff up. Now if you know man has shot it up and cloned it. Don't touch it. Don't eat it. But if you know, what do they call it, the whole food store, if it's organic and you know it's straight from the farm, that's strictly God creation. If it ain't been tampered with. For every creature of God is good. Because just think about it. Let's, let's touch on this for a family. Because this is a part of the great falling away. This is a part of the, the title here. Because many people have fallen to this false doctrine and this false teaching scientifically that you not supposed to eat any meat. It has caused so many people to fall away and even so many people to get sick. You just can't live by eating grass all day just because you see a, a, a insect or a bird do it. You're trying to figure out, well, how can they do it? How can a cow do it? And we can't do it. Because God didn't create you to do that. Period. Again, verse 4. For every creature of God is good. And nothing to be refused. Remember in the beginning. We have to go back to the in the beginning. When God created everything. When he created it. After he created it. He said what? And it was good. Go back in Genesis. In the beginning, read after he created the, the oceans, the land, the sea, the seas, the fish in the sea, the creepy things, the creatures, everything walking. He said it was good after he created it. Being that he said it, his word cannot return back void. How can we say something is unclean in God, the creator, the most high? The magnificent, the all-powerful, said it was good. And how can we, the creature, the human being, say that it is unclean? We're leaning to our own understanding. And we're giving our ear to false seducing spirits. False doctrine. For every creature of God is good. I'm going to keep repeating that. For every creature. If somebody tell you, well, why are you eating that meat? You tell them in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 4. For every creature of God is good. Period. Don't tell me nothing about not eating no meat. Because the word of God says, and nothing to be refused. If it be received with thanksgiving, meaning you buy your chicken, you cook your chicken correctly. You prepare your meal, you give thanks. If it be received with thank if it be received with thanksgiving, which means here's the revelation in this, which means I'm thanking God, Jesus Christ the most high for giving me this food that I'm about to receive. Meaning if there are any infirmities, bacteria or whatever that may be hindering it. 
It can't stand. It will not hurt me because I have prayed over it, prayed over it, and I have given thanks to the one who had provided it for me. God had to provide me with the job in order to make the money to go to the store to buy the food. Therefore, he provided it for me. So I have no choice but to give thanks to him. So by doing it, I'm praying over my meal. In verse 5, it says, family, for it is sanctified. Come on. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. We just did that before we even got the five. We just said that before we got the five. But there you go right there. For it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. If you pray over your food. Now this now, now this goes with anything. <clears throat> God also says in scripture, don't be a glutton type spirit, okay? So moderations now, moderations. He's not giving us a pass to go all out. He still wants us to be respectful of our temples. Do it in moderations. Eat your meat in moderations. Eat your fried food in moderation. You don't have to eat it every day. But a lot of people will say again, well, isn't such and such unclean? Now, for the people that still have this unclean mindset and this unclean sense of uh, teaching from these folks with these false doctrines, Again, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now, this is 1 Thessalonians. Write this down. Take this note. This is 1 Thessalonians. I'm actually go there real fast here for those that are watching my screen on uh, Facebook. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, family. Starting with verse 18. Let's see, we about 33 minutes in. I'm going to be wrapping up here in a second. Let's go with verse 18. Verse 18. Where's verse 18? Okay. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, family. Now let's read this. It says, Jesus declared all foods. Here we go. Jesus declared all foods, including all kinds of meat. We talking about this pig too, Mer uh, M1. We talking about this pig too. I was pointing that out. Letting them know uh, back in Leviticus. And back when they was in Egypt. How they was doing all kinds of things to the animals. And doing it with the animals. And why God had to put those laws and regulations in place. For them not to. Do, do the things that they did because when they did the ungodly things with the animals and started worshiping the creature rather than the creator, therefore it made the thing, it made those particular animals unclean. So God put forth in those precepts and those commandments not to touch them or not alone not to eat them at that time. But in the beginning, see, we got to go back. Before man started disturbing the things of the earth and corrupting them. When you go back to Genesis, when God made everything, he said it was good. Just start in Genesis. When God made this, he said it was good. When God made that, he said it was good. Now look, even in the New Testament, we just read 1 Timothy in 1 Thessalonians. Right, right. Uh, Brother George, you, you, you're on point. You're on point because they were tripping out at that point in time. But at the same time, uh, we still have them same spirits that was in the people then, back then. Are them same type of spirits in some of the people right now that's going around doing things with dogs, cats, doing things with pigs, cows, uh Eating live animals. That's why even in the Old Testament it said, do not eat a live, uh, 
don't eat an animal that still has the life of blood in it. Meaning, don't be trying to eat something while it's alive. Who would do that? Them crazy, sick folks back then. But you have crazy, sick folks right now who's doing that same thing right now. Therefore, when they did that, that made it unclean. But it never, it never erased what God had done in the beginning. Before all that, in Genesis, when he made everything, he said it was good. Now, here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, uh, verse 18, family, it says, Jesus... Jesus declared Jesus declared all foods including all kinds of meat to be clean. That's also in Mark uh chapter 7 verse 19 family uh for those that want to make that note. And it says as with anything each Christian should pray for guidance as to what God would have him or her eat. Whatever we decide to eat is acceptable to God as long as we thank him for providing it. Again, that's how 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18 sums that, uh, that side note we had up. It's, again, it says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Just how in uh, 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 5, when God said, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received in thanksgiving, for it is made holy by the word of God in prayer. So as long as you pray over your bacon, you pray over your steak, and you give thanks to the Most High God for providing you that meal, don't let no man on earth tell you you finna uh, have all kinds of disease and this and that because of that. You need to rebuke that in the name of Jesus. For can, how can some how can a man say something is unclean that God right here is saying is clean? If it's sanctified with prayer, for it is holy by the word of God in prayer, and received with thanksgiving. Okay. I also wanted to read to you guys before we close. Uh, just looking at the questions here on Instagram, family. I apologize, Facebook. I can't see the the comments in my Zoom right now, but I will reply back to you uh, once we end this. But I also wanted to read. I want y'all to take this down. Mark uh, 7. <clears throat> Mark chapter 7, verse 17 through 23. And also remember, write down Mark chapter 7 verse 19 as well uh where it says jesus declared all foods including all kinds of meat to be clean amen and it says in mark 7 uh starting with verse 17 and when he was entered into the house from the people his disciples talking about jesus and his disciples asked him concerning the parable and he saith unto them are ye so without understanding also? Basically, he, he's questioning his disciples because they looking puzzled uh, because of the parable he gave prior to this scripture. Uh, and he saith unto them, Are ye so without understanding also? Do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entereth, into the man it cannot defile the man meaning let me read that again do ye do you not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entereth into a man cannot defile a man meaning this grape juice i have in this cup or let's say i had a piece of bacon right here anything that is as this word is saying right here do you not perceive that whatsoever thing that is uh, without, meaning that is outward, anything that's out that I enter into my body, it cannot defile me. Okay? It cannot defile me as the word says because Jesus is saying right here, this is God talking. He says, because it entereth not into his heart, meaning it's not going into your soul. It's not going into your spirit. It's going into your stomach. Again, it says it into into his heart. 
It because it entereth not into his heart, but into the belly, and goeth out into the drought. Meaning, once it get into the belly, the whole digestive system do its thing, and it's out the dough. Okay, it's it's not a part of me. Therefore, it cannot defile me, as Jesus is saying here. But into the belly and going out in the drought, purging all meats, purging all meats. Okay, meaning once I eat it, I'm purging it right out. And he said that which cometh out of man that defileth the man for from within out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts. An evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness, all these evil things come from within and defile the man. Meaning, whatever comes out of my heart comes out of my mouth. Meaning, whatever's in my spirit, whatever spirit I be of, and I speak. Remember, life and death is in the tongue. So whatever's in our heart that come out of our mouth. That's what's going to defile us if we speak in uncleanly things, if we doing uncleanly things, if we speak in curses over ourselves or curses over uh, someone else. All right. Appreciate you, George. Thank you for tuning in, brother. So it's not what come in the body that defiles us. This is Jesus talking here in uh, Mark 17, verse 17 started. Mark chapter 7, starting with verse 17, family. He says, it's not what enters our body that defiles us, but what comes out that defiles us. So whatever spirit you be of, it's going to show because you got to speak. You got to eventually say something. Whatever come out your mouth and whatever way you are in life that you speaketh, that's what's going to determine if you're defiling yourself, not what you put in your mouth. In Genesis, also take down this note, family. And again, this is a part I wanted to focus on this because this is a part of the great falling away. Many are falling away from the faith and the teachings of Jesus because of these false uh, seducing spirit doctrines, these devil doctrines telling you, Oh, what you not supposed to do because they seen something in the scripture, but they didn't understand it and they didn't do the research prior to why God said not do that then. But the same God that gave that word to Moses is the same God that's talking right here in Mark 7 and also in 1 Timothy. It's the same God talking uh, in Genesis 9 and 3 in the very beginning. This is not a contradicting the word of God. He's not contradicting himself. Most people say, well, the Bible contradicts itself. No, it doesn't. You just don't have no understanding. You haven't. God hasn't given you the revelation in the spirit or not alone basic sense to know that if you read prior to him doing that, you will clearly read and see what. The crazy folks were doing back then with animals and different things and how the Egyptians were worship, worshiping creatures, laying down with creatures, doing this and that with creatures, which you have some people still doing to this day. But, family, before we go off on a tangent, Genesis 9, Genesis chapter 9, verse 3. This is the last note. Write that down. Genesis chapter 9, verse 3. The written word of God says, every moving thing. Now, this is in the beginning, beginning, okay? It says, every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. This is him talking to the people at that time, okay? He says, every moving thing that liveth, this side note, again, this before Moses, this before Exodus, out of Egypt, okay? Every moving, living... Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I'm a victim of it too. I, I just I take a sign. We all are victim of listening to these seducing spirits and these false doctrines. But when the word of God is clear as day as this, and God says, man, look in the beginning. What did I say from the very beginning? 
I, technically, I didn't change nothing. I had to put that in place because they was tripping out. But he says in Genesis chapter 9, verse 3, he says, Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Even as the green herb have I given you all things. He said this in Genesis 9, verse 3, family. He said that in Genesis 9, verse 3. This is a part of the great falling away. So many of us have fallen away from the faith just by thinking that God is contradicting himself. Because we're listening to seducing devil doctrine, these seducing spirits. I had another example here. I know I said that was the last one. Let's see, 846. In Leviticus, let's go to Leviticus 11, uh, chapter 11, uh, verse 39. It says, uh, if an animal that you may eat dies, anyone who touches the carcass will be unclean until evening. In verse 40, it says, whoever eats from the carcass must wash his clothes and will be unclean until evening. And anyone who picks up the carcass must wash his clothes and will be unclean till evening. Again, he is showing them. What they must do when handling a carcass that dies. He's letting you know that's the same thing. You you go outside, you mow your lawn. You go up, pick up roadkill. You don't just go back in the house and sit and act like ain't nothing happened. You need to cleanse yourself. You need to throw them clothes in the washer. You need to take a shower for being out there picking up a uh, roadkill off the ground. He's teaching you how to properly cleanse yourself. And most people, they, they skipped over uh, how uh, in 1 Kings, this is the last one, I promise. In 1 Kings chapter 17, hey, let me go there. My God, it, see, God doesn't contradict himself. He, he doesn't contradict himself. <clears throat> my God, my God. Thank you to those that are still on, uh, taking notes, writing down these scriptures, looking them up for yourselves. Uh, because we can't be a victim of seducing spirits anymore. We can't be a victim of these devil doctrines anymore. These are the last times we have to be prepared. Blessings to you also, brother. Blessings, blessings. Uh, thanks for joining in there on Instagram. And blessings to those that are still here on Facebook as well. First Kings family, chapter 17, um, verse 2 through 16. Now this covers how uh, Elijah being fed by the ravens. Okay. Now, if you read prior to in the beginning, how it says uh, ravens to be unclean and different things and not to touch them. But remember why I said those things had to be in place. OK. Um, in verse two here, it says, and the word of and the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself by the brook uh, sheriff that is before Jordan. In verse 4, and it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, okay, talking to Elijah here, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook of Sherith that is before Jordan. And 6, verse 6, family, and the ravens which... It was taught to be unclean, okay? And the ravens brought him bread and flesh, meaning the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook and it came to pass after a while 
that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Okay. Again, prior to Elijah, it was in the precepts and the commandments, but we broke all this down on why God did all that. That ravens and <clears throat> certain birds were unclean because why? Because mankind decided to do things they weren't supposed to be doing with animals and mess with DNA and doing all kinds of crazy stuff that you see on the news people do with animals these days, okay? So therefore, it was unclean. Now, but in the beginning, when God says everything he made is good, but when we as mankind start to dibble and dabble and corrupt the things that are God and make them unclean, that's not God's fault. That's our fault. Then we turn around, we have a problem when God is putting on us all type of laws and statutes because we messed up. Now, okay, now you can't do this. Now you can't touch that because you're tripping out. You're doing stuff you ain't supposed to be doing with these animals. But here, he's showing how he took something that you read was supposed to be unclean. But if God says it's good, the, the revelation in Elijah, I mean, in, in uh, the raven's feet in Elijah is that when God says something is good, there's no questioning. It is good. It, it don't matter if you uh, read in your tradition and your uh, religious books that it was unclean, this and that, but you still didn't get why it was unclean, but you just feel that, oh, because he gave us this. He just didn't say it was unclean just because. And I'm not going to rehash that and break re-break that down, but y'all get the point. But God will use... Which you assume to be unclean, something to be unclean, to be a blessing for you. You can look at Moses to be a raven. Many people got amnesia on what Moses, the sin Moses did. When Moses killed that Egyptian in anger. That's a raven. Just using a metaphor here. He was unclean. But if God says, I'm finna use you and redeem you back to him and cleanses you, can no man on earth tell you, tell you that you are still an unclean being? If you're known in the past to be of drug abuse or alcoholism or lesbianism or homosexuality in your past, and God has delivered you and transformed you and cleansed you. Can no one, no man on earth say to you that you're unclean? They word don't matter. The only word that matters is the one who has redeemed you. And that's Jesus Christ. So with that family, I'm going to close. Uh, tomorrow we're going to pick it back up. Still with the great falling away teaching. Um. Uh, but I want to thank those here on Facebook, those on Instagram who took the time to listen in. Make sure, I sure hope and pray y'all took some notes. Uh, but again, you know, Scripture teaches us don't be uh, glut, gluten and glutton and just out of control. Moderation, family. But... Stop going around saying something is unclean. And if you believe in the Most High God, you believe in Jesus Christ, and you pray over your food, you sanctify it, you give thanks for it, who can no man tell you is unclean? Can no man tell you is unclean? No man. But make sure you, you, you know, just don't go left. and You can't eat Popeyes every day now. But... This is just to say that you can't eat meat. It is not a sin to eat meat. So, rewind this, share this, keep this message going. Let's get those that who have fallen away from the faith, and let's get them back in the fold for those that want to be back in the fold. 
But I pray that God strengthens you, keeps you, and uh, continues to bless you with good health. In Jesus' name, y'all be blessed.